It's been a tough month for our union, but what I do see, I've always been proud, privileged to lead this great, mighty, progressive, strong and successful union. And just when the times of crisis and the times of challenges and the fight, what I'm looking at out here today sense to me is that you care about your union, you want your union to stay in your hands, it is your union, it's not someone else's, and I am so proud to lead the people of this union and the great members. So give yourselves a round of applause. I want to say a lot of things. I did a big speech, which is a bit unusual for me, so apology, but I'm, I've decided I'm not going to fucking read it. So um, I am going to make some comments about certain things. Can I just say about trade unionism? For people who don't know, your union is the first registered trade union in Queensland. There's a stone in Parliament House. Is it you, the CFMEU, created a trade unionism in this state? And we've been born and we're 160 years young and we'll be another 164 years. So you should be proud of that because you are the movement, we are the collective, we are a massive team who work with other trade unions. The other thing I want to mention, this thing about allegations, criminality and corruption. We always knew that when the uh, government talked about Victoria and New South Wales, was that when they included Queensland, we just knew straight away this wasn't about criminality and corruption. They talk about allegations. There's never ever, in all my time, being the leader of your union, there has there been an allegation of criminality and corruption. I can tell you plenty of examples, and you heard from other speakers. We've had raids, we've had royal commissions, we've had ABCC, we've had plenty of criminality in regards to some of the colourful characters, the bad developers and the builders. That is the actual reality. You people are hard-working, honest, decent people who deserve everything that you get and do then always blame the trade union movement. So when this attack comes, is that when they're out trying to have a go at our union, power is money. Money and power is at the top. These issues when you talk about criminality and bikies and all this other fucking rubbish, don't get too worried about the media, especially the Korea Mail and others. They're just white noise. They're the people that actually bring the problems to the projects, to the jobs, the construction sites. Not you. It's you wear down the food chain. This is about lazy governments bringing the problems to the job. They're the thugs. They're the ones that intimidate. They're the ones that bring the labour hire. They're the ones that have no due diligence or do anything in regards to government projects. The thing that really shits me and I want to say some things about the people that, that I'm with, I've been working with, is that they treated all the leadership, not just the three that are standing here in front of you today. The CFMU's got a great team. We have 21 people who actually represent your union across the Queensland and the Northern Territory, to regional Queensland and all parts. We're not just a construction union, we're 25% off-site manufacturing, council workers, workers in factories, local government is a lot of low paid workers. These people were treated like criminals. Why? Because they, they never did anything wrong, but they were treated like that. And what I want to say about your union, they talk about democracy, is that 85% of the decision making that goes with the executive and the branch council comes from people that I'm looking at it here today. And I want to thank those unsung heroes a part of the 21 who did nothing wrong, they volunteer to make your union bigger and better and stronger. They put their love and their passion into it and they were sacked for no reason. And they all came and said to me, what have I done wrong? And I said, you've done nothing wrong. So I think everyone here should thank the other unsung heroes of the CFMU. We can talk about the ACTU leadership. We know that a deal was done with sell-out Sally. At the end of the day, she might play the gender card and all the everything else. But this, what she has done to the trade union movement, this is historic, is that she can't walk away from bringing the most undraconian, unjust, unfair laws that Australian workers will ever have. 
and that she will take that for the rest of her working career and that will be the legacy. She sold out not just on CFMEU, she sold out on all workers and she should be condemned. We mentioned Alvo, right? Talk about his treachery, you heard from the other speakers. Look, there's no doubt he's sold out on workers. I've been a huge critic of Alvo. Is that he's always been anti-union, I've been saying that for a number of years. When you're anti-union, what do you create? Anti-union laws. And that's what he's done to your union and what he's done to the rest of the union movement. But a bit more about Alvo. This guy's got no strength, he's got no vision, He's got a glass jaw. Why he's taken your union on is because across the country, he's been failing to actually govern for what he was elected to do. He has failed in regards to major policy issues like cost of living, housing, climate change, and I can go on and on. What he doesn't like is you people, which we are part of the community, we have that democratic right to speak on your behalf, Whoever's in government, Liberal, Labor, whoever they may be, they're doing a shit job. We've never been shy in coming forward. That's what he doesn't like. And the thing about Albo is that he'll spend more energy in trying to get rid of his political opponents than he will do running this country. And when the media stops drinking that Kool-Aid, because that's what he wants you to do, is focus on the CFMEU, because how Albo Albanese operates, best form of a tax diversion. If you're not talking about him and his team doing a shit job, is that you should be focusing on him. Because he is doing a shit job, and he's not going to do a shit job on our people. Because what are we going to do? We're going to fight, are we? So let's plug anything. We've got, don't forget Miles too. God, what a joke of a leader. Is that uh, talk about a try hard and just hasn't got it. Can't even communicate with the basic, uh, the public out there and the punters. He said, don't forget he also chose to screw over your Queensland branch of the union. Because he was a puppet for Albo and Albanese. And what you can do is you'll have that opportunity in less than two months. Is that when that opportunity comes, you do never award bad behaviour. Why are you doing this against Albanese and Miles? And Albanese will be seven and a half months time is that you've got to vote with your feet. So if I say, what are you going to do? And you're going to say, vote him out. What are you going to do? Vote him out! What are you going to do with Albanese? Vote him out! What are you going to do with Miles? Vote him out! Can I just say, this is not the first rodeo about trying to attack the CFMEU. They've all tried it over the years, trying to have a go at the CFMEU. And what I want to mention a couple of things is it's not good politics. If you look at history, and history has a habit of actually explaining things and outcomes, is that people don't like unions getting attacked. Not just the people in the union, their workers and their families, etc. The rest of the community doesn't like it, and workers don't like it. But for some reason, Miles and Albanese have gone down that path. But we've been down that path before. Howard had a crack in 2007, lost his seat and lost his leadership, attacking the CFMEU. Anna Bly did the same. In 2012, she attacked you decent people out there. And what happened to her? She lost her leadership and she lost her seat. Mad Monk Abbott, out of crack too, with the Royal Commission not long after, attacking the CFMEU again. He lost his seat and he lost his leadership. Turnbull, made in an election about us with the ABCC, etc. And what happened to him? Lost his seat and lost his leadership. And what I was proud as punch, and this is why I want the trifecta coming up, a bit of a, you know, can easily like a pun or two, is that Eva Law in the Northern Territory. She was the first one about three months ago, back in May and June, said about criminality and corruption, had nothing to go with, says it in parliamentary privilege, dared her to say it on the streets. We campaigned against her. What happened to Eva? Gone. They talk about when they look at these three people, myself, Jade and Kane, put us on the front page, treating us criminals, putting the word gone. One thing you can do for us is that Eva Law is gone, hopefully in two months, Miles is gone, and what's going to happen to Albanese in seven and a half months? Oh! In quite here. Oh! Now I want to talk about what we're going to do. Is that you've heard from a lot of other speakers, as I mentioned, and I want to thank these unions shortly. 
is that we are a fighting union and you want to know what we're going to do. What we are going to do is we're launching a campaign here today called Your Union, Your Choice Campaign. What that campaign will do is that we will be doing a High Court challenge as a matter of urgency and I'll be the applicant. Also, we'll be having a fundraising platform campaign through Raisley, and that will be launched tomorrow. The reason why I've raised it in here today, this is an opportunity for everyone to participate, support and campaign in regards to getting your union back. And then, I mean, like anything, this is going to be the biggest challenge and the biggest fight that we've ever had, but we're all up for it, and all the donations that you do, it's a big investment, you've got to get control of your union back. You will never allow a government takeover again. The other thing, with that huge financial support, which people will never know, the media, good luck to them, is it's been huge. Why? Because finally the light bulbs come on for the rest of the trade union movement. Things have moved quickly in the last week. What Sally McManus, with her deceit and dishonesty, what they voted the ACTU a month ago was to look at uh, the issue of, you know, uh, investigation having a day in court in regards for it. But what the outcome, and what she did, and I know everyone in Parliament, I've been on the National Executive and that, had plenty of people, she was lobbying behind the scenes to try and do your union over. So what we, what we got is a lot of other unions, and I can't thank on the rest of the, the ETU, in regards for their decision, which was a strong decision, because why? They know they could be next in line, you heard from on, but every other trade union is in that situation. This is the most, unbelievable of attack in the democracy of any trade unions. Why? Because for the first time in this history of labour laws in this country, you can actually get someone unelected killing your union from the inside. It's like a cancer and you've got to get rid of that cancer. And that's why other unions now are coming forward because they realise even the other day at the teachers' dele uh, delegates convention across here, the delegates themselves, over 500 told their union supported Cross River Rail workers to begin with, but also supported the CFMEU. So it is growing, and as I said, the campaign will continue, and we need the rest of the trade union to support. But can I just say, at the moment, the funding is fucking phenomenal. So why I'm happy about this is that I might not be your leader, is that I'll be putting a lot of time and energy and effort. The other thing too, social media. God help you, you have to rely on the right-wing media. They're just there for the, um, for the big end of town and the corporates. They never actually ever cared about community and workers ever in this, in this state. So we will have a team for social media. You will be kept up to date in regards to everything. We will have that accountability of the administrator, because it's no different from anyone else, is that they're there, they won't be there for the best interests of the members. Why? Because they never fucking asked you in the first place. So they wouldn't have a clue about running the union but at the end of the day is that we'll hold them accountable and there has to be some things that need to happen that will happen. So yes, you can see this fight is not just the fight of the CFMEU, it's the fight of all workers in this country and we will campaign to do it. I just want to say a few things is that I won't be your leader in regards to this, but I will be your leader in regards to the campaign. And every step of the way is that your union, we will fight and we will take ownership and it will be yours again. That's one thing I'm fucking determined to do. Why I say this, all of us here, we are a team, is that everyone in the CFMEU, we work hard. And that's why I want to thank everyone that I'm looking at here today, is that, you know, being proud and privileged, but the fact, just looking at this crowd here, is just taking it to another level, couldn't even be more prouder. Is that I want to thank all the staff, the delegates, the members, the officials, Jackie, jo um, Jackie um, Stace, Leanne, all my two comrades here. We, we, we think that we all love each other. We have some very robust conversations, Jade and Kane. But why we do it, we do it respectfully. We love this union and we want to make the union bigger and better. So that's the reason for the fight, is we want to make sure that we go forward and that we actually get rid of the cancer within this union. Also, as Kane mentioned, is that my family has taken a lot of um, sacrifices 
So they're here today. I'll try not to fucking lose it. Um, but I want to thank them. Is that because without them, is that um, I wouldn't have been able to, to, to do what I do. So look, we've got a big job to do. You've heard now what the plan of attack is. You've heard a lot of emotion, shock, anger about what we're going to do. You know what the plan is. We've got the social media campaign. We've got the legal strategy. We've got the legal. We've got the um, other strategies in regards to what needs to happen. Some what we spoke at here at the rally is you keep it up your sleeve. So look, the next, as I said, the opportunity will come in two months, and I hope that you will send Miles and his government packing. So look, two, three things I want to ask, and I want to ask you, and you tell me what you're going to say, yes or no, but I'll ask you three things. Are you up for the challenge? Yes! Are you up for the fight? Yes! Are we going to win? Yes! Are we going to win? Yes! Other than that, thank you for be being, giving me the opportunity to be your leader. Let's fight, campaign, and we will. Thanks for listening.